All right, so let's talk about drug cards for just a second. This is the um, document that is posted with the assignment, and so this is the requirements for the drug cards, just telling you which medications do you need a drug card for. The one with the star beside them, those are ones that have North Carolina State Protocols attached to them, so you need to make sure you include that information on the drug cards. Um, these are just other things for you to consider um, as far as abbreviations, medication, administration, rights, ways to convert pounds to kilograms. So the actual math on that is divide the pounds by 2.2. So like if the patient weighed 220 pounds, you would divide that by 2.2, which would give you 100 kilograms. Or you can do the 3 a.m. weight, which is to take the patient's weight, divide it by 2, and then drop 10%. So if the patient weighed 180 pounds, divide that by 2 would be 90, 10% of that would be 9, that would give you 81 kilograms. Okay, so those are just ways to think about the weight pretty quickly. So looking at the requirements for drug cards, just information that needs to be on there. Again, all of that was included in the PowerPoint that I gave you. So trade name, generic name, mechanism of action, indications, contraindications, adult and pediatric dose, route, side effects. If there is a state protocol on there, again, the ones with the star or asterisk, they need to have that information. And then a picture of the medication container. You can use the ones that I put in the PowerPoint or you can use your own. Either way is fine. These do need to be bound together in some way. So if you put them in a binder or a um, index cards that are in a flip book, that's totally fine. If you do individual index cards, you need to punch holes in them and tie them together with a ring or a string or some way they need to be bound together. Again, I will just be checking these to see that you did them and I'll give you a grade for that. Just again, a hundred if you did it and a zero if you didn't, but if you also um, check the syllabus for late, um, the late policy in regards to drug cards, and then it'll be on the grade that you earned. So it'll be points off if you forget to add the pictures, if they're not bound together, that type of thing. Okay, so just make it easy for me, include everything on there, turn them in on time, and let's everybody get a 100. Again, they are not for me. These are for you. I know the medications. These are for you to study by, so don't sell yourself short. So in the same thing, let's talk about some drug calculations really quickly and just some examples of that. So I gave you a couple of examples in the previous PowerPoints on medications where you might have to figure out how much in MLs to give, but let's take a look at that. These are the two drug calculations for amount that you will really be looking at, and that is how to determine how many MLs to give, whether you're using weight or whether you're not. And so basically the way that this is broken down is um, this is the amount ordered, this is the amount on hand, and then that's going to give you the total mLs. That's what you're looking for. Same thing with the one in weight. So this is the dose ordered, this is the amount on hand, and then this is going to be your weight, and ultimately you're going to figure out how many mLs to give. So let's look at a few examples of using these. So how many mLs of epinephrine would you administer to an adult patient? And so the dose order there is 0 0.3 milligrams, and the amount on hand is 1 milligram in 1 mL. So the dose ordered is 0 0.3 milligrams, and you can just put that over 1 to keep everything the same, times the amount on hand, which is 1 mL and 1 milligram. Now you could mark out the milligram, mark out the milligram, that's going to leave you with 0 0.3 times 1 over 1 times 1, which would ultimately be 0 0.3 mls okay but not all of them are going to be this simple i just really want you to see how the process works same thing for this one so this one's going to be weight based so how many mls of tylenol would you administer to a child who weighed 10 kilograms so the dose is 15 milligrams per kilogram and the amount on hand is 150 milligrams in 5 mls so again you could probably figure this out in your head but let's go through the process 15 milligrams per kilogram is what's ordered. The dose on hand is per the bottle. It says there are 150 milligrams in every 5 mLs. 
and then the child weighs 10 kilograms all right so we could knock some of this out we could say milligram mark it out milligram mark it out kilogram mark it out kilogram mark it out that's going to leave us with just mls which is what we're looking for here all right so ultimately we could um do the math straight across so 15 times 5 times 10 all right so let's pull up our calculator we've got 15 times 5 times 10 and then divided by 150 is going to give us 5 so that would be 5 mls not to confuse you too much but you could also drop some of these so to make that math a little easier like you could drop the zero here and also drop the zero here it's totally whatever you want to do but i don't want to confuse you with that okay so that one was pretty simple because you already knew that you had 150 milligrams in 5 mls and 15 milligrams per kilogram at 10 kilograms was 150 milligrams but what if it wasn't that easy okay so let's look at a different formulation of that so you have 15 milligrams per kilogram is what you want to give and this time the Tylenol dosage is 160 milligrams in 5 mls and the child weighs 12 kilograms so let's look at that math okay so again straight across the top 15 times 5 times 12 divided by 160 would give us 5.625 all right 5.625 mls that would be like a textbook answer that you're giving ultimately you would probably round this depending on how you're measuring it to about 5.5 mls all right so again, that's some pretty quick down and dirty. I'm going to give you a quiz next week. So you can just go ahead and prepare yourself. I'm going to give you a quiz next week on with a few drug calculations. So I don't want to trip you up with that. I just want to test you and see if you've been practicing. Okay. So that's going to be coming up next week. So if you have any questions about pharmacology or drug calculations, please make sure that you ask those questions in class or that you send me an email. All right.